chapter two, we're going to talk about probate, what probate is, why people are so interested in avoiding, and how it's going to affect your family. In chapter one, we focused on operation of law transfers and what that means. And in chapter three, after this, we're going to talk about trusts and how trusts are used to avoid probate. But why does everybody want to avoid probate so much? What exactly is probate? You hear it and it sounds like this big nasty word and nobody really understands what it means. Well, probate is the court proceeding that takes place at death in order to transfer your assets on down to your heirs. So that's why this box is separated out. This box represents going to court and having a judge oversee the administration of your estate. Now, what probate actually is, is it occurs with or without a will. And that really is the number one misconception that people come to me with, is they feel like they have a will, we're all gonna sit around this big fancy conference room table and divvy up the goods and, it, and go home at the end of the day. We'll have a reading of the will. And I learned the other night watching TV that that's the only place the reading of the will really happens, is on TV, not in real life. In real life, a will is just a set of instructions to the probate court. So it makes sure that your assets go to whom you want them to go to, but it does have to go to court. And probate is different from state to state, but in Oklahoma, the average probate takes one year or more and costs 10% of the estate. And that cost is attributable to court costs, attorney fees, filing fees, publication fees, all of the things that go in with the probate. You can't be tied up in court for a year and come out with a cheap bill on that when you involve attorneys and the court system. But how probate works is any of the assets that are then owned, in my example, in my individual names. My spouse died, I inherited everything by operation of law because I was joint on it, and now I die. And I have a will and I think I've covered it, or maybe I don't have a will. And so what's, the laws of intestate succession control where my stuff goes, but that means my house has to go through probate, my car that just has my name on it goes through probate, my bank account that has just my name on it goes through probate, my stock certificates, or maybe this is my brokerage account that holds stock certificates, it has just my name on it, so it goes through probate. What about my IRA? Well, it probably has a beneficiary designation on it, so I'm gonna throw it back in the operation of law box. And life insurance. Well, again, if it has a beneficiary designation, it's gonna go in the operation of law box. So it really, on those two assets, it doesn't matter what my will says, they will pass to the named beneficiaries that are on them. So these are the assets that go through probate. They're valued at, my, at, um, at the time when I die or at alternate valuation date later. And these assets then have to go through this court proceeding to pass on down to the heirs. The three reasons probate are bad is two of them I've already alluded to. It's very, very expensive. 10% takes a long time, so a, a year or more usually. And it's all public record. So anybody and their dog can go down to your local county courthouse and see what you had when you died, who you left it to, which kid you wrote out of the will, how much of the farm you really owned, and so forth. So I really, I don't see that there's any advantage or positive things that come out of probate, except we as lawyers make good money doing them. So if you wanna have a will, that's great. At a minimum, it does state where you want your stuff to go, but understand while it may be uh, certainly uh, less costly on the front end to do a will, it's gonna be more costly for your heirs on the back end to have a probate. One reason that a will actually is important and you should have one is if you have minor children. So even if you have a trust that we'll talk about in chapter three, or even if you're married and everything's gonna pass by operation of law, deciding who will take care of your children if you are not there to do that is a very, very important decision and one that you shouldn't take lightly or leave up to the courts to decide. And even if you say, well, Dawn, I don't have minor children, I'm certain you know somebody that does. It might be your child or your grandchild, but if you know someone that has a minor child or if you have a minor child, please, I implore you to get a will so that you don't have loved ones fighting over taking care of your child when you can decide that ahead of time in a will. So the big issue there is, plan now or plan later. So it's much easier for you to decide where and how your stuff goes than to have the courts involved in that later. So 
I'm going to take all of this back out, so maybe they did or didn't go through probate, and tune into chapter three, where we're going to talk about and focus on trusts and why that is probably the better option to avoid probate.